Uh, I'm Ben and this is Josh at Brown Dog Gadgets. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, stress testing on some conductive tape. So Josh, uh, where did the idea for doing this come from? Well, we have a lot of customers use our conductive tape for all kinds of projects and we get frequently asked, how much power can our tape safely handle? And we honestly just don't know. We, we use tape for lots of stuff, but we never really go above half an amp of power on our tape, so it'd be kind of fun to figure out what's the upper limit that our tape can handle. Okay, so essentially uh, we'll have our power coming from the power supply here. We'll be putting a, a steady current. We're gonna go up to, what, five amps? Max of five amps off this thing, though I don't know if the tape can handle that much. So uh, the tape itself right here will be part of the circuit and it's literally gonna be the weak link. It's gonna be uh, kind of like a fuse, basically. At a certain amount of, of current, it's, it's gonna fail. It's gonna stop working. Exactly. Now, of course, this is, this is over the top. We are intentionally putting way too much current through this. Oh, goodness, this yeah. is You would never do this on a typical project. I mean... Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to be going 20, 30, 40 times higher than anybody I've ever known has done with the tape. This, let's put some current through this, see, see what happens. Yeah. So right now we have our quarter-inch maker tape, which is a nylon conductive tape hooked up here at about a one foot distance between these two pegs. We began our experiment starting at one amp of current and then slowly increased the current through the circuit. We monitored the current as measured on the power supply. We also checked for heat with a kitchen thermometer and a thermal camera and occasionally with our hands. Okay, so this tape, it, it definitely got warm, but that's it. I mean, can you still touch it? Oh yeah, this is, I, I'm in no way, yeah, feels room temperature-ish. It, yeah, it does not feel bad at all. Okay. So that's definitely an amp. It'll get a little warm, but it's not going to cause any issues. And we've had this on for a minute or so, and yeah, I can. So not, nothing's happened. It's not going to start on fire. It's not going to break. No, well, let's see what happens when we bump it up to two amps, which would be 200 plus LEDs hooked up to it. The thermometer says 106 right now. Which is... You know, that's like hot tub warm, but it's still not going to burn you. Yeah, 105, 106 Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's, and two amps is <laughs> well beyond what anybody would ever reasonably do. Um, yeah, 200 LEDs plus uh, would, be, would be quite a bit. So let's, uh, let's take it up to three amps. So we're just about three amp of power here. I can definitely smell something happening with it. I smell like a little bit of burnt something. It could be the adhesive on the back side. Oh yeah, There is definitely. a conductive adhesive on the back of the maker tape. I'm smelling that. So that's probably like a burning glue smell because the nylon itself, nylon melts at about 428 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, I don't think we're gonna see the nylon itself melt. The beat thermometer says 143 right now and rising. Oh so no, do we max at 143? Uh, let's see, you gotta get to what, 160 for fully cooked pork, right? I think so, yeah. We're close to 160 in the middle. Oh gosh, 160. It's, it looks like it's getting hot fast on the thermal. So this is the point where we probably shouldn't be touching it anymore. Now, as we talked about before, as heat increases, so does resistance, which is just this feedback loop, which is then gonna make it get hotter. So yeah, 160-ish, that's, that's a lot. Well, Ben, we're at three amp. Should we bump it up to four and see what happens? Absolutely. All right. Let's make some more interesting smells. Oh, it burned out on us. It broke? Yep, it, it broke. Break? So, oh, and actually we'll see it cooling down now on the thermal camera. Cause since the circuit's broken, there's, there's no more current. So what happened is we have a spot right here where the tape just broke across the oh, middle. Oh yeah, it's cooling down real fast. Yeah, so it basically like a fuse, it broke. Um, so exactly like a fuse. This is what I kind of figured might happen, is that we'd end up with some a hot spot that would cause a break of some kind. And we actually heard a little sizzle. I heard a sizzle. Yeah, I heard a little something. So something went on there where it just went, went out. Uh, so yeah, that's good to know. If you ever try to pump too much power through this tape, it'll just break like a fuse. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but only at a length of three inch, which should should be interesting. We're gonna actually pop it up right up to three amps right away since we know that at a foot it handled three amps perfectly fine. I can smell it. We're gonna bump it up to three and a half because I like to live dangerously. Yeah, 
There's three and a half. Oh, oh, I just heard it. There it burned out again. So yes, yeah, same thing. So about three and a half amps, it'll it'll fuse itself. It'll it'll cut the cut the current by burning out randomly. And again, there's just a nice little uh, line there where the tape fizzled. We hear a, sna a pop as well. Now we've got some eighth inch of the nylon maker tape. This is what we typically use with Lego projects with our crazy circuit system. We repeated the experiment time and again with both the quarter inch and eighth inch maker tape. We tried it with and without the wax paper backer. Every time, given enough current, the conductive tape simply fused itself. We finally found that by conducting relatively high current through a very short piece of quarter inch tape, we could concentrate the heat enough to deform, smoke, and finally burn the tape. This took a lot of attempts. Woo, that's really smoky. Wow. And, oh, well, there we go. We had to repeat the experiment a number of times more before we finally got a slow motion close up of actual fire. Okay, Josh, that uh, didn't go exactly as we expected. So what did we actually learn from these experiments here? Uh, that running amperage through tape can be very anticlimactic and that uh, our, our nylon tape though was really interesting. Instead of starting on fire, we found out that it actually ended up acting like a fuse where it burned itself out when we got to basically a dangerous level. And running an amp through a power through it otherwise worked out just fine. So that was nice to know, but the fuse aspect was kind of interesting. We actually had a hard time getting it to heat up to like interesting video levels. Yeah, it, it really behaved more like a safety device than like a, oh dear God, this is a dangerous sort of a thing. Exactly, and an amp of power through nylon tape, that's over a hundred LEDs, like little tiny uh, five millimeter, 10 millimeter LEDs. There'd be like over a hundred of them, which is insane to run in any sort of paper craft project or other thing. And again, the whole idea here was really that we wanted to test destruction, do this kind of way over the top from how any of this would ever be used. And yeah, just know the limits of what our stuff is. And oddly enough, it did manage to you know, handle five amps of power for a brief moment when we had it really close together. Uh, and well, well, I kind of do have an idea for how to set the stuff on fire, except it doesn't involve electricity. But if you literally just have a source of fire, uh, it will absolutely burn. And frankly, uh, this was way easier than trying to get it to short out with the electricity over here. And the nylon tape is just, in general, so much easier to use. It's flexible, durable. Very and strong. You can put it on shirts and it moves around. That's why I like it over copper foil. We just Reusable know that Reusable works as hinges and things. It is, yeah. It just solves all those annoying issues copper foil has. Any uh, last words here on this uh, tape testing experiment here? Not really. It, it worked out pretty well. And also, it was just really hard to actually get anything interesting on the video side of things because it kept We got like the out. one slow-mo shot. I mean, we did. It took a while. But four, what was it, four hours now, I think, we've been working on this? It, yeah, it took much longer than we expected to actually make something interesting happen. Yeah. Uh, a lot of burnt-out fuse effects going on. But that's nice to know, too, that it will uh, cut itself off before it gets to a dangerous level. And again, uh, we, we seriously had people saying, hey, how much current can you put through conductive tape? So now we know. Now, now we know. So if you want to learn any more about this or uh, any of the, uh, the various projects from Brown Dog Gadgets, check out browndoggadgets.com, and we'll see you next time. Hey, we'd love your likes, and if you'd subscribe to this YouTube channel, of course, also please take a look at the unabridged version of the conductive tape testing.